and welcome to another episode of Witchcraft and Voodoo. I'm Sable Aradia. I'm a Wiccan priestess and a practicing witch. And my counterpart here is... <laughs> Hi, I'm Lilith Dorsey. I am a voodoo priestess and I also practice Lukumi and Haitian voodoo. And uh, I'm really excited that we're going to do this show tonight about sex. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about sex. This is something that I'm so glad that you came up with this idea because, you know, it's so misunderstood about our attitudes about it in in paganism in general, I think. And um, I really love the chance to address the topic. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Or what were you thinking when you came up with the idea? I don't know. I guess we could both discuss our respective traditions, start from there. You know, um, I can go first about that because I think voodoo gets a lot of demonization about sex. Not that Wicca does it, <laughs> but, you know, I think we're very sexualized in how people portray us, you know, films like Angel Heart and things like that, that a lot of people think ritual is sort of an orgiastic fury, you know, and I've even had times where people came to ritual and they started having sex in circle before we even started. Started, you know, and that's really not how we do things. <laughs> Great! Sounds like you've you've got the the floor, so go have at it. <laughs> you know, I, people people do some strange things. They really, really do. It surprises me. You know, so. Um, but in general, we do have a legion of spirits, the gay day, which are very lusty, very sexualized, you know, and there are also situations where people would enter into a sort of marriage type arrangement, not necessarily sex with a loa or an arisha, but some sort of marriage arrangement where they would agree to sort of serve them their favorite foods and things like that. So um, that's the short version of what we do in my tradition, you know, involving sexuality. But for the most part, there's a lot of taboos about sex, you know, and I think that's something people don't really realize. No, that's interesting, actually. I remember the last time we got into the concept of uh, God spouses, which is something that's appeared, like, I don't know, it's always been in paganism, but it's gotten a lot of um, vocal um, advocacy, I guess is the right word for it, in the community as, over the past few years. And... Um, it sounds very similar, right? You enter into a relationship with a particular deity, right? And you, you know, make offerings to them that are their favorite foods or whatever. You know, sometimes you do have sexual, you know, or interaction with them either through somebody else or through that experience which i suppose could be seen as some really elaborate fantasizing from somebody's point of view <laughs> well you know like if, if people don't believe in the actual existence of a spirit with its own agency then you could interpret it as having a symbolic relationship with a part of your subconscious or the or an archetype or something and i think either tr you know like that's valid either way right my own belief is uh I don't know. I, I think I lean more towards the actuality of spirit, but, you know, I realize that it could be my own, you know, my own perception and my own belief. And so I'm willing to, I'm not willing to say, well, that's the way it is. And you have to believe that. Right. So, <clears throat> oh, I lost your picture there for a minute. What's up? Ooh. Hmm. Well, okay. I'll keep, uh, I'll keep talking for a minute in the hopes that Lilith comes back. And in the meantime, yeah, God spouses, right? So you enter into this relationship where you're um, connected to a deity and some people view it like a marriage um, or some people just offer to serve that particular deity in I don't know, I, I don't see much difference between that and, say, the relationship of nuns, right? Nuns are technically the brides of Christ. Part of the initiation ceremony involves a marriage-type ceremony, right? So it could be a lot like that. And I'm still not seeing Lilith here. Hmm. Well, I well, hope she gets the message and comes back. I suppose in the meantime, I can also talk about the... Uh, 
um, misperceptions about sex and Wicca. Okay, one thing that we get a lot of uh, demonization about is, I don't know, promiscuity, sexual licentiousness. Um, I think as a general rule, Wicca tends to be pretty sex positive. We believe that sex is a sacred act, right? It's the most intimate sharing that you can have with another human being. So, you know, for that reason, we have very different attitudes about how we approach that. Some of us are very free and open about it. Others are very, you know, there's very specific people that they'll have sex with because since it's sacred, you don't want to cheapen it, right? So, um, so you get different attitudes. Some people are very much, you know, very monogamous or perhaps even asexual. And that's totally cool because we try to maintain an ethic of, you know, it comes from the charge of the goddess, right? All acts of love and pleasure are, are, are her rituals. So you can choose to do so or not do so. Who you choose to love is your business. Um, we don't tend to have a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, social stigma about homosexuality or about, um, I don't know, multiple relationships, right? Or if somebody likes to go out and find Mr. Right every Friday night, as long as they're practicing safe sex, that's fine. Now, we get a, a lot of, uh, we have a reputation about doing this in ritual, and it's it happens, but it's very rare. In... Um, initiated uh, paths of, of Wicca, right, British traditional Wicca and whatnot, the third degree initiation is generally in the form of what we call Great Rite. And that is the sexual um, union of usually the priest and priestess, <clears throat> although in uh, modern times many more people are open to same-gendered interactions or whatever right so but it's a sexual um it's a sexual ritual in which you do what we call drawing down a spirit into your body ah she's back yeah cool. hey i figured i'd just keep babbling while you were gone and that's, good. that's a good strategy <laughs> <laughs> i was uh, i was just starting to talk about um great right and how that works for us, right? And okay, so in the great right, you are drawing down the deity that you're working with, right? And then the deity, ideally, it's kind of a form of possession trance, right? Where the deities interact and have sex with each other through your body, right? And there are different levels of it, right? Um, in some cases, it's a very light trance. And in some cases, it's a really powerful one, where you're feeling like an observer more than anything, but you're always in control. This is something that it scares people when they think about it, but you're always in control. It's your body, right? You can choose to go, nope, you know, I'm done, get out, right? And, you know, it's your body. They have to listen to you, you know? Did that um, happen? Did people say that? Sorry? Do people say that? Which? get out i'm done they're like done i'm done enough of this <laughs> oh well i can relate a personal experience it was a little bit like that i was uh in i in one of the traditions i'm involved in it's the um pagans for peace tradition right but you know star sapphire it's okay too but in that particular i was given initiation in that tradition to the third degree to a priestess right her deities were aphrodite and aries now I had never drawn, so I drew down Aries, right? And I was I was playing that part, right? And I won't get into the mechanics, but after a while, right, it was like, okay, people, you know, we have to close this up. People are waiting. Aries didn't want to leave, you know. I mean, how often does he get to hang out and actually, you know, make love to Aphrodite, right? He was like, you know, really, you know, I'm having a great time. Are you sure? I know you're having a great time. Come on, right? And I was like, no, man, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, you know, was more respectful than that, right? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. We really have to call this a close because, you know, stuff is happening. And he was like, okay, well, it was really nice working with you, and away he went, right? So, yeah. Right. Sure. Right. So 
you know, I, I do, do know you hear about possession trance in voodoo. Is there a similar experience that you might relate to that or <clears throat> not? Or like what's. Well, I mean, I, th I think this is interesting because, you know, that's where you are talking about sex, right? So it's been my experience that sex is one of those things that is not usually the kind of thing that would happen during trance, like with somebody you weren't already a partner with, things like that. You know what I mean? There's other things that would happen. I mean, people are always making jokes about I ate dirt and then one time I turned into a bowling ball and I'm always setting my ex-boyfriends on fire during rituals. So there's other things that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. In possession, speaking in tongues, things like that, you know, are very normal. But, and there's definitely, like I said, lusty behavior. I mentioned the gay day, like when the gay day come in, there's lots of times that there's lusty dancing. And then there's also, it's funny, I, I wrote a couple of weeks ago about white clothing. To me, it's funny because I make jokes about our clothes are always falling off. I've mentioned my priestess Miriam, you know, when we had to get her dress for coup de vue for Mardi Gras, it was really hard to get her in to make sure everything was on there. Like I've performed on stage. I'm always trying to make sure like my clothes aren't falling off because there's, you know, you're up there, you're dancing, you're moving, you've got shiny, shiny pretties on, you know. So right. there is this kind of like body object thing. Oh, and I do have a sex story about that. I'll just tell it quickly. <laughs> sure. I was trying to get um, this friend who was wearing idiot pants, you know, like that have slits on the sides. So they have like long slits from the hip down to the ankle. So I'm trying to get him in there and I'm yelling, we're going to do a voodoo performance and he's white. And I was saying, you know, for the longest time, voodoo has been about the commodified black female body. It's about time. It's about the white male body. <laughs> and there was this large old black security guard who couldn't stop laughing at the two of us. Because his stuff awesome. was falling out of his idiot pants. It was great. And we were going to go on stage. It was fantastic. So there's there's my story about that. Right. That's hilarious. Right on. Um, yeah, I suppose I should say, too, that not all traditions insist upon a actual, like, what we call great right and actual, where you do this drawing down, right? Some of them believe you can do a symbolic great right. Some believe that you can do a, um, you know, one person draws down and the other doesn't kind of thing, right? It varies with tradition. And it's always, it should always be something that, you know, like even in my tradition, which tends to be very, you know, traditional about that, it's really encouraged, right? But if you really don't want to, that's okay, you know, right? Like we, yeah, because if you're forced into that situation, then that's not, you know, that's not cool, right? It's, it's never cool when it's required, you know? Right because all acts of love and pleasure so if it's not consensual it's not an act of love and pleasure right mm -hmm. and we also do what we call the symbolic great right by which there is a symbolic joining with you know items on the altar and you know as long as you're aspecting drawing down at the time that's considered sufficient so okay. right in most traditions anyway right. some are more traditional than others now this isn't to say that you might not use magic in, in like sex in a magical context, right? Um, sex magic is something that I think it's a real small minority of witches practice. I really don't think it's a lot, but you know, I'm one of them and you know, <laughs> I am, and I, you know, I think it's really valuable. I think it's really cool to do, but I can understand why somebody might not want to, and, and that's fair, right? But at the sure. same time, you know, I haven't hurt yet, you know, so. <laughs> well, I do, I mean, I do do a lot of that, but again, I don't think that that's necessarily part of my tradition. You know, I just published something in the Women of Babylon book published by Black Moon, which was all different, mostly Thelemic women, but talking about, you know, aspects of the dark goddess and sex magic and things like that. So, you know, that's always been part of my personal practice. But like I said, it's not something that really gets attributed to voodoo in the sense that that's, you know, what it's all about. 
you know, but I did, I think we were dancing around this idea. I wanted to bring it up since we're like almost halfway done um, <laughs> about, you know, I think because a lot of people come to these traditions, you know, number one, because they're unusual individuals and they want to be with other unusual individuals. And also, you know, because they don't know what it's like and that leaves them open to a lot of people who can be, you know, negative in a sexual way. And, and I think that's a shame. You know, I know there are a lot of people in voodoo, you know, I'm not going to name names on the show, but anybody who wants to ask me in person, you know, who just have initiations like by injection, we call them. So, you know, you had sex with this person and you, you know, got shot up with a little knowledge. That's not an initiation, you know. Right. Right. And, you know, even in the context of a great right, where I guess you could say that from an outside point of view, right? It's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's about the connection between you and the divine and the connection sure. between the divine and you and you and the other person and the divine in both of you. Right. So, you know, if, uh, you know, if you're, yeah, right. That's not what it's about. If you're not doing that, then it's not a real great right. You know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you're right about these negative people. I think probably because we have this, you know, reputation because paganism, I think, is in the process of creating a new sexual morality, right? Ours isn't the same sure. as the Christian morality, right? So we have a different theological and thus ethical approach to it. But still, you know, we're, but because we're working out the kinks of that, and yes, puns certainly intended in some cases, right? But because we're doing that, um, and because we have this reputation, sometimes we get people who run through the community and they victimize people. And, you know, it's, it's because we also have this culture of politeness, right? Where we kind of just, oh, people have their way of doing things. And you certainly you shouldn't be alarmist. But, you know, I think it would be better if we'd be willing to speak up earlier and ask questions at the very least, right? Um, I contributed to this anthology called Pagan Consent Culture, which came out earlier this year, and it's got a lot of that kind of, you know, writing in it, you know, what to look for and, you know, how to practice sex magic and, you know, sex, sacred sex in a positive way and stuff like that. So obviously you and I are both really interested about the subject. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I you know, no, I think that's really valuable, and I've heard some really wonderful things about your work. So I just wanted to say that <laughs> in case I oh, haven't said it before. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's. I mean, I think it's a really valid topic, especially for these days. You know, like my girls grew up in the community. You know, so there's a lot of things that people have to look out for. You know, not just for themselves, but for their kids within the community and for you know what's happening. Although I will say this, I I always would have been happier if my kids saw somebody having sex than if I saw them fighting. And I always saw way more fights at pagan events than I saw you know people having sex. It's interesting, isn't it? It's something, you know, like, I don't know, people go to these, I don't know, I think we have screwed up ideas about sex. We're so, ooh, you know, freaked out about it in our culture. And, you know, it's okay to go and watch people getting their heads literally ripped apart in movies. But, you know, oh, they showed a breast. So, ooh, this is, you know, ridiculous, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But again, I think there we go. We're, we're talking about people who are comfortable with their bodies, are comfortable with their nakedness, you know, so it, it just takes things to a whole nother level, you know, so I think we have to be careful and we have to know what's, you know, I think things like the show are good because we have to know what the boundaries are, you know, if you show up at somebody's house and they're like, well, you have to come here and suck my whatever, it's part of my religious right, or I have to, you know, <laughs> like somebody said to me, I have to go over here and have a religious, no, you don't have to go have a sexual right with somebody, you know. You know, no, no, unless somebody agreed to it. <laughs> exactly, and if you if you're if it's totally consensual and you don't feel pressured or forced, right? Then go for it. Like, absolutely, that's great. I celebrate with you, right? But if you feel like the person, if the person saying this has to be done, no, it never does. There's never right. has to. 
Well, yes. I mean, I think, you know, everything should be done in a spirit of love and openness and respect and honesty, you know, and I think that's what is hopefully at the core of everything. But a lot of, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So a lot of people take advantage of these things. So it's a shame, you know. I mean, I often... There's a place in Brazil, I don't think they do it anymore because they've been persecuting a lot of their candomblé houses down there, but they used to keep records of these things. So there would be a record of, oh, okay, well, this person showed up for ritual on time. This person was drunk and three hours late. This person never zips his pants. You know, things like that were on file, so it was nice, but we don't have any such thing in this country. We have word of mouth, which then turns into gossip, which gets sketchy, you know? Yeah, you kind of have to be cautious with that, too, because, you know, so often, right, um, uh, we're, we're a very strong, okay, I don't, I don't know if this happens in voodoo, but I've seen this a lot at pagan festivals and whatnot, because it's very strong. Um, there, there's, okay, we attract more than our fair share of people who don't fit in other places, right? So we get sometimes people were very odd and we get people with a lot of neuroses right so you know on one hand we have you know people taking advantage of the situation and then on the other hand we have people who see victimization in every possible thing right and that's not helpful either i think that you know and it's easy to get alarmist and then start spreading rumors about a person in the community, right? And then everybody, you know, immediately, because we're freaking out about this a little bit right now, right? We're being a little overcautious, I think, in some places, which, you know, I, you have to, I guess, before you can go back to something reasonable. But, you know, this will freak people out. People become social pariahs. And it's a one unsubstantiated rumor you know, from somebody where, you know, you go, didn't they create something like this last year, you know, and nobody ever thinks <laughs> that, you know? Yes. you see seen this. Uh, yeah, you've got the knowing laugh. Yes, I have. Yeah, so, you know, what do you do there, right? I, I think it's more a matter of, uh, you know, using your discernment and, I don't know, trying, to, you know, trying to negotiate needs right no i think you're right and and you're right about nobody has to tell you that you have to do something you know that you don't want to do in these circumstances you know that's everything is you know, again, done with respect and openness. And I think that's, you know, and the media, I think, is responsible for a lot of this. It's responsible for a lot of the stereotypes about sex and a lot of the scary stereotypes as well, you know, that everything has to be hidden, you know, all this, the revealing of the occult and the sacred, whatever, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And most of it is those stories <laughs> that they like to to sell newspapers and get like viewership right because you know oh I saw a naked bum there must be something going on you know that could be a sky clad tradition they might just you know right. practice naked and might you know never ever even look at each other sideways like you, you don't know right and they don't want to know they don't want to know they want to make up stories so that people will go oh you know what are those witches up to it's like reading you know good uh you know erotic literature i suppose right sure yeah exactly right and yeah we both get it and it's it's crap and it makes me angry a lot sometimes the crap that is spread right well, yeah, I, I know. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, the, the witch in the community, the voodoo person was always this other person, which somebody wanted to throw whatever they could on them. You know, okay, they're bad. They eat babies. They have loose morals. You know, <laughs> yeah. but there are ways in which we celebrate our sexuality and that doesn't have to be a bad thing, you know. But as far as Hollywood's concerned, in my experience, most of the voodoo things about that are rather private. That's that's cool. That's good to know. I'm curious. You mentioned right before uh, we lost you there for a minute that there are some taboos. Is there anything that you would feel comfortable discussing as an example? Well, in Lakumi, there's a lot of sex taboos. You know, um, I mentioned before the menstruation taboos. There's also sex taboos. So basically, you know, you know, obviously this varies from house to house, but the general rule is if you've had an orgasm, 
you have to have a shower, pass through run, running water before you become clean again. So that's before you touch any holy objects or before you're in ceremony or before you put on your ritual, you know, stuff or anything like that. That's interesting. Yeah, neat. I, I didn't know that. Um, do you have any idea? It doesn't matter episode? if you're alone or with others. <laughs> Just an orgasm. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Either way. That's neat, too, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think I know of any taboos. A lot of people in working with individual deities will take on particular rituals or things that they do personally. I don't know anything that's universal, right? Like, um, I don't know, weird, weird little things. Like, I, I don't cut my hair, right? And part of this is because I'm vain. Right? It is. I'm, I'm vain about my hair. But it's the only thing I'm vain about that I am. And, you know, okay, right? But part of it is that, you know, um, they say that by tradition, a witch wore her hair long, flowing, and free to show that she was, you know, comfortable with nature and one with the goddess. And when you consider all the old uh, associations with binding up your hair and then letting it down, right? you can see why that might come into the lore, right? So so I always take my hair out when I'm doing ritual, right? It's, you know, and I suppose you could call that a taboo, right? And it, it, But it's not a universal thing. It's just something I've adopted because I think that it's a little sign of reverence that I can do in everyday life. Right? We have a whole bunch of hair things. Oh, do you? Like oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of them go back to Africa because each of the Orisha have their own hairstyle. So you could know who somebody's guardian Orisha was by how they were wearing their hair, which I thought was really cool. Like <laughs> That is cool. I had no idea. That's neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of that. Yeah. I have a thing about my hair, too. So I'm with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I should probably talk about skyclad a bit. I don't know if I have yet. On, on the show, but sky clad basically means clad with the sky, naked, right? And the idea that witches practice naked, I think came from Margaret Mead, right? Where um, her theory was that a lot of these people and what they said, the witches that were accused in witch trials were actually members of a surviving cult that had existed for some time worshiping old European gods. Now, a lot of that stuff, of course, has been disproven or at least cast into question over the past several years or so. But um, the, the idea that witches practice naked as a, a symbol of their connection to nature remained, right? So some traditions, those that are more traditional, not mine, actually, this is one thing where we're not traditional in the old British traditional sense, but um, skyclad is something we reserve for initiations. We don't generally yeah. practice skyclad in regular life, right? And um, it's also supposed to symbolize equality because it's very difficult to be egotistical when you're naked. Everybody's got little, you know, cellulite and scars and things that you just can't be proud about, right? So... <laughs> 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 so so yeah it's supposed to make everybody equal right and that's you know i like that symbolism too right i think i'm pretty sure nobody says this but um the the Jains, right that's that uh, pacifist sect that um you know brushes uh park benches to get ants out of their way so they won't hurt them right some of the more devout Jains go about naked for you know this lack of harm thing yeah. and they the the word they use translates to sky clad so i'm pretty sure that's where gerald gardner got it was from them interesting interesting i never heard that wow i believe it <laughs> well i got no proof right it's totally my theory but i just never heard that that's great uh oh, uncle gerald okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right that's great. That's great. No, we would never do that. But thank you for explaining it. That's very helpful. That's very, very helpful. But yeah. Trying to think. No, there's nothing like that. Oh, I did remember another sex story. But that, I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> 
Okay, oh, come so on, go for it. All right. So I was talking about the gay day and, you know, for us, the gay day are sex, but they're also death. So I was at, a friend of mine was doing a keening circle and, you know, where people wail for the ancestors and the dead. And there was this woman here, there, she was clearly, you know, there was something a little mentally challenged in a lot of ways about her, you know, but, you know, she was participating. That was great. But we start the thing and everybody's crying for their ancestors and their dead mother and their dead child and all of this stuff. And she starts going, shove it in, stick it in, shove it in, stick it in, <laughs> like at the top of her lungs, like and doing these gyrating sex movements. And it was very strange. It was very, very weird. So, but I mean, it made sense to me in this connection between sex and death and how that manifests for us. But just in the moment where people were crying on one side and she was doing this like lewd gyrating thing on the other side, like was very weird. That is interesting. You know, that's something that uh, I've joked about that uh, Wicca is about sex and death, basically, yeah. right? Those are the great mysteries. And I think I mentioned when we did the initiation thing that my feeling on it is that the first degree initiation is about birth, the second degree is about death, and the third degree is about love and sex, right? So it, it's neat how that balance of, of death and life, I think that we kind of intuitively sense it a great deal. So, I, I yeah, that's neat. It's, that's, you know, and then another thing, like, I don't know, it's not the same thing, but I connecting with that, right? Of course, um, the seasons in Australia and South America, of course, and, you know, I don't know, I don't think anybody, I don't know any Wiccans from Africa, right? I know Wiccans in South America, I know Wiccans in Australia, right? So I can speak to that, right? One in New Zealand. But anyway, in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, the seasons are reversed, right? So when it's Beltane here, right, which is May 1st, it's like, you know, fall is starting there, right? Mm -hmm. So they do um, Samhain, right, which mm -hmm. is our Halloween ritual kind of deal, right? right? right. At that time of year. So th the oh, poles wild. maintain that same balance, right, when you think about it. Yeah, they do. They do. That's great. I want to go down there. I want to have two salons in one year. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be so cool. I would love to do that too. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, another salon right on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else you forgot? I feel like we're at the half hour mark. We are. I, you know, I, I'm sure there will be other things in the course of time that will come up, but I think I've covered most of the major points yeah yeah i thought there was something a minute ago that i wanted to talk about but no i, I no i lost it so it can't be that important so <laughs> i think i covered everything like i mentioned yeah yeah that's about all i can think of relating to sex anyway you know i wonder if it's you know, the comfort with sex, the fact that it is a different kind of morality about it. It's not, you know, that, that makes people so uncomfortable and weird and makes them come up with all kinds of strange things about what people do in voodoo and witchcraft, right? Like, yeah. you know, I, because our, you know, I, I'm getting from you, right? Your morality is not about, like, you know, the Christian morality is very, oh, sex is a sin, you know? Ultimately, right. it's, all, it's all dirty, right? And only marriage makes it not dirty, right? <laughs> so, you know, and for us, it's exactly the opposite. Sex is, you know, if you treat it with respect, right? Because it's, it's powerful and it's a mystery, right? It's something that celebrates the sacred. So, yeah. you know, and obviously voodoo has a very, you know, it's all part of life and life is good kind of vibe going on, right? So oh, I wonder yeah, if, definitely. what's that? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's how we view it. Yeah, I guess maybe that's why it tends to, you know, people don't know this, oh, you know, what do you mean sex isn't dirty, you know? People are, you know, I guess they still find it a little strange. I hope they'll come around in time. 
Yes. Me too. It's not Victorian England or anymore. True that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we can probably call this a day at this point. Um, okay. Did you have any thoughts about what we should do next time, or do we want to discuss that later? Because I almost even, because we put it as back two weeks, I actually needed the reminder this morning to you know know that we were going to do this, and I didn't have time to think about it. So, <laughs> No, I don't have any idea. <laughs> Yay. I have no ideas. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool. All right. Well, we'll talk about it over the course of the week. And of course, um, to our viewers, if you're watching this either now on Google Plus or on YouTube, right, then if you have a topic suggestion or question you would like to know more information about, please do not hesitate to ask us in the comments and we would be happy to cover that for you. Yes, yes. We want to see some comments. Yay. <laughs> well, awesome. As usual, really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again, what, in two weeks again, right? So that, what day is that? <laughs> okay, let's see. That'd be the 23rd, according to my calendar. Yes, the 23rd. That sounds great. Okay, cool. All right. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I know I mentioned on an earlier show about Priestess Miriam and the temple. The So far, the GoFundMe's raised $20,000, and she's got a yeah. lot of donations, and we found a new space. So, you know, we're still trying to put things together and get all moved over there, but things are looking up. Thank you. And I also wanted to say, because he'll get mad at me, the guy with the pants was Jason Winslet. So... <laughs> <laughs> Busted! <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Sable. This is so much fun. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, me too. See you again in two weeks. Bye, Bye everybody.